I had one person, that's right, one person asked me to cover this comparison. And because one, I'm an awesome creator, and two, these are my two favorite small phones of all time, I had to have a look. So hey guys, my name is Ryan Thomas with Failtech, and this is my comparison of the Moto X second generation and the Nexus 5 in 2017. So the main standout issues is that the Nexus 5 is made by LG and so can boot loop. In fact, this one has gone into a boot loop before, just before someone blows some money on a phone that doesn't work. Not all of them do this but some can and that is important to note. Even though these devices came out a year apart from each other with the Nexus being released in late 2013 and the Moto X in late 2014 they share a lot of the same specifications including the price. You can pick one of these up for around £150 on eBay and I would say that they fit nicely into this price range. The designs of these phones are pretty different. I wouldn't say that the Nexus 5 is badly built but it's certainly more plasticky than the Moto X. With the Nexus you're getting plastic all around with Gorilla Glass 3 coated screen. The buttons feel kind of mushy and the build materials don't seem quality, but the design is nice, especially if you get it in the white colour because it looks like it's in a tux, which is kind of cool. As for the Moto X, you're getting a much nicer feel in my opinion, with a curved rubbery soft touch back that fits amazingly in the hand and with a metal rail surrounding the device which feels great as well. It's a sharp taper on the edge so it doesn't feel chunky by any means, uh, but it's certainly not uncomfortable like something like the S6 Edge. The buttons feel great and the overall design I think looks stunning too, the slightly tapered edges to the screen so it feels very premium and smooth and the screen is slightly curved on the sides. They both have near enough 5 inch 1080p panels and are very good but the slightly larger screen on the Moto X just looks that much better due to it being OLED but before we get into that here is the Nexus 5's IPS display which is nice and crisp and having a slightly higher pixel density figure due to its marginally smaller size. The IPS nature of this panel means the colours are way more accurate and true to life or at least more so than the Moto X. It means that you're losing losing out on some saturation and pop like the OLED panel in the Moto X has and that's really rather subjective to the user. I personally prefer the OLED panel but each to their own I suppose. Talking of OLED, the Moto X does have an OLED display, it's definitely one of the nicer panels that Motorola put into their devices with all recent Moto flagships having OLED screens nowadays anyway. But what I would like to add is that the overall features on the OLED panel on the Moto X are really good because Motorola is really good at implementing always on display which is nice to have. As for the cameras, neither of these are amazing. We have an 8 megapixel shooter with f2.4 glass on the Nexus and a 13 megapixel sensor with f2.2 glass on the Moto Z. Neither of these are going to give you as good of photos as anything like an S5 or a Z3 which is in the same price range. The Moto X is naturally sharper as it has a higher resolution sensor. I feel like the Nexus 5 is going to decrease down the ladder of acceptable quality levels as time goes on and we demand more and more from our smartphones. One redeeming feature is that the Nexus 5 does have OIS and the Moto X doesn't apparently. Then there's video. The Nexus 5 can shoot 1080p video at 30fps which is okay but the Moto X can shoot UHD video at 30fps. Neither of these boys have slow motion nor have micro SD card readers which means two things. One, you can't get your KC Neistat on, and two, you're limited to the internal storage capacity, cloud storage, or any external drives you may have. For example, I back up all of my photos to my home server in the attic. These phones, despite coming out a year apart, are very similar in their performance spec. The Nexus 5 is running a Snapdragon 800 with two gigabytes of RAM, and the Moto X has a Snapdragon 801 with two gigabytes of RAM. The 801 is what I can only describe to be slightly higher clocked 800, with the CPU and GPU being higher clocked, Performance specs aside, the speed and smoothness are actually really good, being that the Nexus is running stock Android and the Moto X is running very, very close to stock Android, with some awesome Moto tweaks like the always-on display and the wave to show notifications and a plethora of other gestures that I really do enjoy. I really do think that the Moto skin is the best skin you can get because of the bloat being so minimal and the advantages are phenomenally useful. Both of these phones run well on stock 6.0 and will run any apps and games you throw at them, however the custom upgrade to 7.0 will get even better features. I plan on releasing a bunch of videos, by the way, as I currently do have the Nexus 5 in-house so I can do some custom software videos. The batteries in these phones are the same size at 2300mAh, which I see as a little bit too small and something like a 2800mAh cell would be better. With those, the standby time, at least on the Nexus 5, is absolutely dreamy. It lasts for about a week on standby and is really awesome because it beats most iPhones. However, if you plan on using your device instead of just leaving it in a drawer, you'd get between between three and five hours of screen on time. I'm getting between four and four and a half hours of screen on time, which is really good for an old phone with some really bad old fixed cells. The speakers are fairly different on these devices. The Nexus 5 has a fairly tinny bottom firing unit that doesn't feel great, but the Moto X 
you're getting a front firing speaker that I think sounds a lot better as it's actually facing you, which always helps. You get micro USB 2.0, NFC, and a headphone jack on both, with the Nexus 5 even supporting Qi wireless charging and the Moto X supporting Quick Charge 2.0. So you have trade-offs with both. Personally, I would actually go with the Moto X as I've never used wireless charging even on my S7 Edge, so I don't see why I would use it on the Nexus 5. The main downside to both phones is you don't get a fingerprint scanner, which I hold as a requirement to all phones. So unfortunately, I wouldn't use any of these phones as my main, although I would possibly use one as a business phone. And overall, I would just say that these phones are great phones. I, again, do hold my standard to a at least a fingerprint scanner, so something like the S5 or maybe the iPhone 5S would do a little bit better here. But there are so many other benefits to it that the fingerprint scanner, unless you're really picky like me, doesn't really make much of a difference. I'd just go with the Moto X due to the OLED panel and the Moto features that just sway me. Of course, you do get that subjectively better build, design and camera, I just prefer the X. But that's not to say the Nexus is bad, because it's not. Anyway, I wanna thank you all so much for watching, guys and girls. Please do drop a like or dislike on this video, depending on if you liked it or disliked it. Please do comment your thoughts in the comment section below, and please do subscribe if you're new around here to never miss a video like this one. My name's been Ryan Thomas, you guys have been awesome, and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.